it's a privilege for me to be asked to speak and pray God's blessings upon all of us. I represent Delaware Churches for Middle East Peace, which is affiliated with Churches for Middle East Peace, which is a national organization seeking to find a peaceful, just resolution to the for the lives of Muslims, Christians, and Jews in Palestine, Israel, the land that many of us call holy. We know, I think you know as well as I do, that we humans can use one of the greatest gifts that God has given us harmfully, and that gift is religion. We can use that as an excuse to deny the worth and humanity of those who do not believe the same way we do, or who do not express their relationship with God in the same way we do. And when this is carried to an extreme, when this is good to an extreme, it gives permission, it gives permission for abuse, for harming, and even to eliminate the other who is different from us. Of course, there are other markers for this, race and ethnic background and gender, but I focus tonight on my role on religion. The murders of the three young people in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, are what has precipitated this meeting, this gathering. The motive for the killer selecting them for execution is still being debated. What is clear is that the victims were Muslims, and the accused murder is reportedly anti-religion and anti-Muslim and Christian. Now it's evident that we live in a violent time and no one of us has immunity to that violence. There's no pill that the doctor can prescribe for us uh, to make us immune to violence. And it's understandable that to those of us who are in the minority in any given community feel especially vulnerable. And this community, in this community, indeed in this nation, our Muslim neighbors and friends and fellow citizens sense that they are becoming fair game for violence. In a piece posted just two days ago in the Washington Post, excuse me, Washington Post, about a 2011 Pew poll of American Muslims, 6% said that they had been threatened in the year 2010 or attacked. This number, 6% doesn't sound very big, 6%, but that turns out to be about 156 Muslims who were polled identify with having experience being victims in one way or another of hate crimes. So I'm suggesting that it's now time that religious leaders and people of faith clearly and without vacillating, refuse to allow the faith that is theirs to be used for bigotry in all its ugly forms. To not give cover in the name of the Holy One to those who would co-opt faith for evil purposes. To make clear that we all have been created in the image of God, in the image of the Holy. And may those three young people who lived in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, rest in peace but may we not rest at all until our labors to uphold the dignity of every human being have borne fruit. <laughs>